Holy moly, what is up all you Counter-Strike fans? And uh, well, all of you have been teased a little bit as it actually was a while back now, several days where Nadeshot had, had quote tweeted some things saying, hey man, uh, I agree that they actually want to be back in Counter-Strike and maybe have 100 Thieves back for CS2 with a competitive CS lineup, or at least for the esports side of things, making a return to Counter-Strike. Will this happen? We have no idea. Could it happen? Nadeshot remarks on this in, in a recent podcast saying, it is a possibility, but the economics of the situation. So I'm sorry to tell all of you guys watching right now, we, we were teased and led on just a wee bit by Nate. Hunter T getting into Counter-Strike 2 esports. There's a world where it happens. It's got to be the right time, right opportunity, man. I'll always say that. I'm not trying to string anybody along. Yeah. I want to be in Counter-Strike one day again. Yeah. Just the economy, man. Mm -hmm. You know, we want 100 Thieves to be around for a very long time, and our business actually looks very healthy right now, but we definitely need to be uh, very stringent and very realistic about what we're going to spend. Mm -hmm. I mean... This is the thing, like coming into next year, I don't know what any of our rosters are going to look like. I just don't know. Like we'll make those decisions when the time comes, but you just have to be smarter about how we spend. Mm -hmm. And it's a long-term play about how we invest in esports. And I know this will somehow be met with controversy. If you guys are a diehard CS or CSGO fan, uh, it was not without drama. 100 Thieves trying to partake in that scene many a years back. You think about the KNG slash Brazilian lineup. Uh, they also had some other drama. I know that Nate Shot was involved in and in trying to balance like watching his Call of Duty team versus his CSGO team. Uh, th there, was, there was quite a bit of drama when 100 Thieves previously tried to be a part of the eSport that we won't dive into right now. But regardless, when it comes for the NA space in CS right now and needing a big name, I, I would freaking love to see this return. Obviously, Hunter Thieves brings a big name along with it, and it'd be really cool to see. But even more obviously, it's a very difficult space as Nadeshot expands into to economically and financially make sense for CSGO. For most organizations, especially in North America, has proven quite difficult as we have seen. I mean, you've had the staples of like Team Liquid uh, based in NA, even they are going to a European roster. You've had, of course, Cloud9, but they've been a European core for a while now. I mean, I think back to the time, the, the glory days were when Cloud9 was like revealing their salaries. That was like peak of like, what is even going on at this point in time? You know, people fall into EG who have had tons of players in and out of their roster experiments over there. And then of course, right now, complexity is is that the last standing North American horse in the race that wants to stick with an American core for CSGO or heading into CS2? So could we see Nate shot 100 Thieves make a return? They're trying to find the perfect timing and to somehow make it make sense because there's a lot of moving pieces here. We definitely have some tough decisions to make around how much we spend, how realistic if we were to even reach like the top of the totem pole of spending in whatever game we play in, are there rosters that are already set in stone that we can compete with, even with that spend? So it's it, it's really fascinating to me how often you'll see like pr traditional sports franchises go through like a rebuild era and phase. But that's kind of the, the shake and the rub of esports. We don't have a draft. It's not like we have... Uh, D1 college recruits to look at and and understand like, okay, if we free up budget, we understand that this year we're not going to probably perform at the level that our fans and the rest of the organization expects us to. There's like a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. But with <clears throat> esports, you know, you can obviously be as diligent as you can about rookies and and, and scouting players but it, it's really hard to find like the diamonds in the rough and all of this around the same time i think nell and others have now rumored tsm a potential return i'm not sure if the core of that roster will be american but certainly will include some heavy hitting players which will be expensive uh you have teams like liquid and cloud nine who have gone away from the na core complexity picking up people like Elise and, and spending probably big money to get these guys it is not cheap to get into csg Go. We have known this for a long time. Counter-Strike is certainly very expensive, especially if you're looking for some, some big NA pickups. You know, can you do it effectively? Can you, can you make it worthwhile? And then just the operating cost of, of, of fielding a CS team, 
that probably has to boot camp elsewhere and then travel throughout the entire year. It's been tough, man. And, and I would love to see someday just like a dream of like 100 Thieves is back, Optic is back, TSM is back, NA is back. But it just uh, it seems far fetched right now. They continue to go on and expand into how hard it is to find those, you know, those deep rooted talent, those up and comers who are somehow not found by others or the price is not escalated by other teams out there. It's very difficult in esports and gaming to scout the proper talent and say, hey, this this 14 year old kid, this 16 year old kid, they're going to be the next you know, Stewie 2K, they're going to be the next twist, they're going to be the next so and so. And then to hold on to that player effectively, it's got to be super complicated and let alone to find a whole roster who can compete together and at the level of, of CS for what it's really come to and the travel. It's uh, it can't be easy. I, I, I mean, I don't know who thinks it would be. Yeah. And then the, the hard part, too, is like when you make those decisions to spend less, Everybody just outwardly, like over the last six months, everybody and their mother has been bitching and complaining about how terribly ran organizations have been. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand how to build a business around esports and yada, yada, yada. All that feedback is fair and true. I went, well, not necessarily true, but I understand why they say these things. Mm -hmm. But they, they spent the last six months talking about how terrible a business esports is. And maybe not all of the people that are saying those things, but some of that segmented community with that perspective, if we were to announce a team that we didn't have a big budget for and we limped into the season and we're trying to plan for the future, immediately they're just going to say that you don't care, you don't want to win, and why is, does your roster look the way that it does? There's just no uh, – you cannot please everybody. Yeah. And Can't I think it. it's – I understand why people have such uh, harsh criticism for esports teams. But I promise you, it's a lot harder than it actually looks. Like, you truly cannot fathom, and I'm not comparing esports organizations to LeBron James, maybe not the best analogy, but anything in life, it is easy to sit back and judge the decisions people make without being in their shoes. Like, you don't know the amount of pressure, the amount of variables and the decisions that they're making uh, and where it's coming from, that pressure. It's just it's really hard to be empathetic and walk in somebody else's shoes mm -hmm. uh, and to be so quick to judge and say, if I were doing that, if I was in your position, I would be doing a lot better. I would be making smarter decisions. Uh, yeah. And I get why that happens. Mm -hmm. But it's just not its not as simple as it, it what you see from the curb, you know, yeah. looking inside actually is. So 100 Thieves and Nade Shot, they want to be in Counter-Strike for CS2, but it sounds like they're going to wait it out for the proper timing. And who knows if they're ever going to pull that trigger. What do you guys think? Do you want a minute? Who do you, who do you want them to sign? You know, would they be an NA core? Or would they go the EU route like everybody else? Could it be, you know, financially feasible? We'll wait and see. Till next time. Take care. Okay, bye.